What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. In today's video, we're talking about why this chart still has me a little bit worried about the risk on, risk off sentiment in the stock market. We'll also be talking about our technical analysis levels for the S&P 500, NASDAQ, GME, Tesla, Bitcoin, and more to really break down these big moves that are happening right now. This video is gonna be a good one. Stay tuned. All right, guys, well, as we like to do together, let's take a look at what happened in the market yesterday. And you'll notice it was all over the place through the session. We'll have a look at that more in just a second. What I wanna highlight is these banks, JP Morgan, Bank of America, they were up huge. And this is due to another intervention order pretty much propping the S&P 500 yesterday. We'll go through that in one second. Let's have a look at the major indices. Here's what happened. The Russell 2000 was the standout. It started the weakest showing the volatility through this particular market and then finished strong 2.18%. This is the 2000 small companies. Then we've got NASDAQ finishing down 0.14%, holding the line through that massive support. And we'll be looking at this support because it is such a critical hold that happened yesterday on the NASDAQ. S&P 500 and Dow Jones kind of mirroring each other. When we look at the sectors, it started bad for energy, then it became much better. And actually energy ended positive for the day. Technology was almost flat as attack and financials led the charge. Let's have a look why. And it's all because bank stocks are gonna rise after hours as the Fed sets date to lift buyback. Little bit of potential sneaky insider trading there, potentially I think. Notice how those banks rallied through the session and then all of a sudden we get the Fed saying, hey, we're lifting the buyback and dividend restrictions, all the things that forced you down in the first place, we're allowing you to do it again. Now, is this good? I think it's more of a sugar rush kind of scenario. I've talked about a few times on the stream that I believe that if you have companies not investing in themselves over the next decade and just doing buybacks and these things that improve share price, it's going to cost them. And I think banks are going to have to start investing in technology and improving. Otherwise, there are newcomers to the crowd that will start dislodging and disrupting that area. I really do think that could be a thing for the next decade for the longer term. Let's have a look at the volatility index here. It dropped pretty heavily yesterday for the S&P 500 after that recovery was met. We got a little bit higher, no close above the 22. Now we're sitting at 19.8. And it was really about this one, the dollar index continued its rise and its strength. When you have a look at the dollar index on the daily, you'll notice it closed above the daily 200. This is an incredibly critical close. We're now approaching the 93. I expect it to find some resistance at 93, but it's been strong ever since the technical happened through the 9196. It just shows you time and time again, guys, if you have really solid setups like this, when that closure occurred, we knew the dollar index was moving towards a bull run and look at it go. It'll probably go to 93 now, find some resistance, and then it could move all the way up to 94. And I know in the comment section, quite a few of you are like, 94, Tom, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. It certainly looks to be shaping up that way. Now, 93, I still think acts as some form of resistance. Then we see sell off back down to the 200 simple moving average where it'll be met by some buyer demand. That's the kind of thought process that I've got on the US dollar. What is this doing to other markets? Well, firstly, let's have a look at Bitcoin because we witnessed something during the live stream yesterday, which I think a lot of people should pay attention to. And that was this setup. This was a magical setup for the short. We've got a long leg doji. We've got a clear level of support through the 52,200, which we analyzed back on the left-hand side. And then we have two rejection pins, two rejections flattening into that price. As soon as you got a new low formed here, it was just cataclysmic selling off down almost towards the 50,000. Now what happens, this 52.2 acts as resistance and that's what's happened. It's bounced up, it's found some resistance here and now it's selling a little bit. If we close above the 52.2, good news is we go to the 50, 
4,000. If we continue to move down here, Bitcoin could be set for something like a 47, even a 46,000 initially, and then maybe even back into the 44, 42. So it's really critical for Bitcoin. Come join us tonight in the live stream, two and a half hours before US market open, because we'll be covering this one. And I'm very interested to see which way it goes over the next 24 hours into the weekend. US 10-year treasuries, a little bit of recovery here. It's hit our 1.6 level that we predicted with the double top earlier this week. Now we've got this 1.65 zone. Look to that to act as resistance. If it breaks through, we return back to 1.7 is kind of my belief. And possibly that then puts some further pressure on the NASDAQ. But I'll tell you what, the NASDAQ does not want more pressure right now. If we keep getting pressure on that NAS, it's going to break through the zone and really clear it below the 12,800, 750 area. Let's go over to silver. Silver, beautiful bounce yesterday, actually in the face of the US dollar index. And a few people have been messaging me. I've got people messaging me from Australia saying the mints are out of silver. I've got people messaging me in America saying we cannot buy physical silver. There is no physical silver around. Is this story across the world? People in Europe, people everywhere else that are silver bugs. Have you been able to purchase silver? Let us know in the comments down below because I'm seeing a huge lack of silver across the board. Great rejection here. Massive pin bar coming off the 2450. We talked about every 50 cents matters in silver. We've now closed above the 25 and we've broken through that downward trending trend line. So it looks like for the first time, once we get through these little rejection wicks and this 20, we could be moving up in silver for the first time in quite a few weeks. Silver, possible shortage coming through across all physical bullion like we saw last year, but maybe even worse. Let's see what everyone has to say. Now, GME and AMC crowd, I know you guys will be happy. We saw some pretty big moves. 183.75 coming out from GME. Yesterday, i got to admit, I was a little scared for you. I thought we would return back to the 90, but this market is just not technical. It is based on hype, emotion, and of course, FOMO of getting through. And a lot of pumping was going on yesterday, and it really did seem to work. We're back to 183. I can't really say this is a strong resistance or support, in my opinion. It's through the 20 exponential moving average on the daily. I think the GME, while it engulfed, it looks really strong. I mean, it's up 52.69% with some post-market action up as well. It's not technical from my opinion right here. It's just too difficult to read through that. When you get to this, was 120 a strong level? Not really. I mean, 90 has been the stronger level. If it falls again, look, it could make some sense. I mean, you can see here, there's not much structure through there, but 173 was where I probably expected it to start finding resistance. It just powered through the zone. Hey, that's awesome. Post market here on AMC, $11 plus. Now that would be a great strong open tomorrow. I would like to see a daily movement above, or at least a four hour or two hour movement above $11. You'll notice here the actual close is 10.94, straight off the niner, hits the nine, bounces off through the session, hits 11, sells off a little bit. Now, if we hold above the 11, we move into the 12 again, then we can move into the potential 14 once we get through that. Look, things are looking better. Things are looking up. Congratulations to you guys, the true believers out there. I've got to say, yesterday I was like, whoa, you know, <laughs> 120. I'm thinking the 90. But yeah, it's not technical. It's just absolute beast mode engaged for these pairs. Good luck on those ones. Tesla, hey, it was looking pretty bad as well. This still doesn't look great on a chart. I mean, if you were charting this up, you would say it's just basically remet where the previous low was over here on the two hour and it's acting as resistance multiple times it tried to clear this level you'll notice here rejection through the session rejection through the session rejection through the session and then now it's closed right there tomorrow critical for friday here for tesla can we bull through this and just break that technical downtrend that started let's see what happens in the session we'll go over to the nas now to get a better idea so here's the nasdaq good news massive bounce. Look at this futures bounce back to the 12,800 level and a beautiful rejection wick. Whew, it was looking pretty scary and it still is. Today, what we want to have happen is we want this high of yesterday to be taken out. We want a bullish close. I'll be happy. Anything that looks like this from the bull side, I'll be happy with anything that goes like a closure there. Ideally, we hit at least a 13,000. If we get above 13,000, 
th th even better for the bull side for the bears it looks like you need to take out this low as soon as that happens though you are going down here so there's going to be a big participation phase movement down it's it's really just got to close underneath the 12 750 area for the bears to remain and get back in control 13,000 for today is a level this level where it is right now is a level and then for the bears 12626 should continue the movement downwards towards the 12300 there are critical zones all over us 100 nasdaq at this point have a look at the real market real market looks actually a bit more dodgy in terms of where the closes occurred it kind of looks like you've got the support and then you've got just this instant resistance i'm going to go with the side of it was looking okay and considering that we actually have the futures trading at 12822 I'm feeling a little bit more positive about it, but yeah, that's not ideal. It's not really the type of thing you want. Look at the daily here. You just notice it just come back up and it's testing it. So tomorrow, Friday session, it's still make or break for the bulls and the bears. S&P 500 fans, well, the good news is the Fed allowed the market to go back up. It's all on for finance and people were buying that quite considerably 3909 strong close above the 3900 resistance support area that's not too bad at all a follow through today would be very very good let's see if we can get like a 3950 or something close into the weekend let's take a look at the weekly candle here looks like basically an indecision candle at this point so friday will be important please join us live there's not much more to go through on the s p 500 because it's just in this middle of nowhere zone look at the nas look at the russell they're the key areas in the markets and of course dollar index remains the key point when it hits 93 i do expect some selling there and that to flow through hopefully so for some bullish market action all right guys please subscribe if you enjoyed this video remember to get, click that like button and we'll see you for another stock market live session and crypto and commodities and everything else i'm having a lot of fun in the markets guys and i hope you are too good luck